Hello, this is Mike, and I'm going to show you how to master the striate function in Title. And I think striate is the the coolest feature of Title, as far as I'm concerned. So we're gonna we're gonna rock it. Uh, all right, so I've got a sample here. It's kind of a long sample with some uh, melodic aspects to it. Sounds like this. <laughs> So, so there you go. It's kind of a long sample, and uh, you could at first you could hear it overlapping, and then I slowed it down so you could hear where it stops and then where it starts again. So uh, I'm going to start demonstrating Striate with this long sample because I think it's a little easier to demonstrate with a long sample. Um, so for those of you who have tinkered a bit with Striate, uh, we can apply the Striate function with a integer value and what this will do is it will take that sample and chop it up into 16 pieces and make it sound something like this. So in a way uh, it, it uh, is kind of a, a cheap way of achieving time stretching in in title, although I wouldn't really call it a, a time stretching function. Uh, but anyway, we, we can keep uh, changing the value of striate to change how many pieces that this gets chopped up into. So you can achieve some interesting effects with that. Um, now the the length of each grain, so to speak. So I, I think of it as um, uh, granulizing the sample into individual grains. So in this case, we've chopped it up into four grains. Um, so you don't have any control over how large the grains are in in this uh, case. So if I say stride 16, the sample gets chopped up into 16 pieces, but I have no control over how large those grains are, um, and Striate kind of a title kind of does what it wants with it. In any case, um, if we slow this down, you can actually start to hear the gaps in between the grains, which is kind of cool. So let's do this. <laughs> So it's kind of interesting. Um, so now we've taken those grains and we've sp spread them out over a longer period of time uh, without changing their their length. Um, kind of cool. So let's move on to striate prime. So striate prime is a overloaded version of striate, very similar. Um, and what we can do is specify a second argument, which is the uh, grain size. So we can specify a size of 0 0.1 here. And if we do this, it'll sound like this. Oop, do I have a, oh, I have, I have a error here. There we go. It may be a little hard to hear, but the grains are actually uh, large enough that they're overlapping in this case. So 0 0.1 for a grain size is actually fairly large. And at this tempo and with this many grains, we're actually getting some overlap. Uh, if I specify a larger value, it may become a little more apparent. You get some interesting effects that way. And obviously we can make the grains really small. So that's kind of cool. Um, we can even pattern out the grains with uh, the spread function. So if we wrap striate um, in a spread function, we can actually uh, pattern the grain size like so. Uh, just kind of make something up here. Um, and what this will do is it'll uh, spread will actually apply the grain size as a pattern. 
something like this. So that's kind of cool. Uh, all right, what else about Stride Prime? So let's clean this up here. Um, so then we can combine this also with slowing it down. And you can really achieve kind of a, a customized gate or stutter type of effect like this. Slow it down even more. Stride it out into uh, many more pieces, keep slowing it down, keep changing the grain size, and, and really, um, really kind of turn this into an extremely stretched out sample uh, with our own custom grain size, custom number of grains, and at the speed we want. And depending on your sample, if it's a melodic sample or a percussive sample, whatever it is, you can really achieve some unique sounds and, and really uh, change. Um, this sample into something completely new. All right, um, now let's talk about multiple samples a little bit in striating. So I've got two bass synth samples here, and they're just uh, they're the same except they're a, a pitch uh, like a whole step apart. And sound, oops, I don't want to do that yet. Slow forward, sounds like this. All right, so we've got two bass samples. And if we apply the striate function to this, and let's just pick a, a value there. It sounds like this. So it just kind of sounds like a blur of stuff. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly what's going on. But if we slow this down quite a bit, you can start to understand what Striate is doing. So let's play it again, but we'll slow it down. So after slowing it down, you can really tell that um, what Stride's doing is it's alternating uh, the grains of one sample and the other. So it's playing the first grain of the first sample, then the first grain of the second sample, then the second grain of the first sample, second grain of the second sample, third grain of the first sample, third grain of the second sample, and so on. So it just plays the grains in sample order um, as you go. Um, I can add another in here, um, so you can hear the effect even further. And you know, when I've tried Stryte with denser drum patterns, it, it's just so, it sounds like a jumbled mess. But uh, um, breaking it down like this kind of helps you understand really what's going on. Um, Obviously, you can control uh, striding of multiple samples with Striate Prime, um, and you can, you can control the speed, just like we were doing before. So you get the idea. And moving on to speed. So now that we've got uh, uh, some control over the striation, you can you can do even more fun things with the individual grains. So let's take let's take the first part of this pattern here and we'll paste it. Sounds like this.
All right, so we're just breaking that that sample up into 16 grains. So what if we wanted to have each grain be its own pitch? Um, if we do something, when I say pitch, I mean speed, uh, playback speed. Um, so if we apply a pattern to the speed, something like like this, I'm just making this up. Um, it sounds like this. So it actually didn't change. So so why is that? Why why don't we hear a, a speed difference? Uh, the reason is because speed is being applied to the sample, not to the striated grains. So to do that, we need to wrap uh, this in parentheses so that the speed is applied to the striated grains, not just the sound. And so the result is this. So kind of cool. Um, and obviously we can really uh, customize this. We can, um, you know, have some uh, additional notes in there if we like. Uh, I'm just kind of making this up here. Something like this. Now we've just taken that that plain old bass synth and we've been able to chop it up uh, and get control over the speed and um, size of the individual grains of that sound. Kind of cool. Um, all right, let's talk about short and long samples. So we've been dealing with longer samples, but you can do some fun stuff with uh, short samples as well. So I've got a kick drum here. Sounds like this. And if we stry it, it just kind of by itself here sounds like this. And of course, we can apply a custom length to each, each grain if we want with stry it prime. So kind of interesting. Um, but one technique I want to show is trying to isolate a part of the uh, just a part of the sample. So in this particular kick drum, I think there's an interesting bass tone kind of a, at the end of it. Um, you can kind of hear at the end of the pattern more of just a, a tonal sound. So I'm going to try and isolate that. So let's do this. Let's um, I want to stretch this out a bit, and we're going to stretch this some more. See what this sounds like. Something like this, maybe. All right, so that's kind of cool. Um, but I, I don't want the attack part of that kick. I just want kind of the, the ending sustain of that kick. So I'm going to start by reversing it, and the whole striated pattern is going to be played in reverse. Oops. So actually I'm going to put reverse over here. But um, I just want to isolate that that tonal part. So I've put since I've reversed it, I've put more of the um, more of that tone part of the the kick now at the beginning of the pattern, and I can use the trunk function to say I only want to um, return the, kind of the first half of that striated pattern, and uh, that kick that the, the attack part of the kick which was on the front. Um, and is now on the back because we're reversing it will be truncated off. So now it sounds like this. You can still hear a little bit of attack in there. So we'll truncate it a little bit more. Increase my grain size a little bit.
get the idea. We can we can kind of isolate a little bit of the sound that way. Um, and of course, we can apply some speed to this and completely change uh, what the original sounded like into something completely new. Bear with me here while I have a little bit of fun. I'll do a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Bam, let's see what this sounds like. So, then, so now we've taken this, this kick drum sample, uh, isolated a part of it, and uh, we're now able to kind of do something with just that, that segment or that, that part of it. Um, you know, I, tr I truly didn't isolate just a single part. It's kind of a rough estimate. I'm, I'm just trying to get that that last quarter of the of the sample. Um, but you get the idea. You can you can really mess with the grains, rearrange them to a point, uh, and and uh, get some some fun sounds out of it. So anyway, that's uh, all I wanted to show. Uh, hopefully you can use some of these techniques while you are striating and have fun with title. So that's all. Uh, talk to you in the future, if not later.